Hey everybody, thank you so, so much for tuning in. Today's video is a really, really simple and affordable farmhouse style sign. These things are super duper cute and you probably have some of the supplies laying around at home. You can upcycle so many of your old seasonal signs to make this. And it is actually really, really easy and doesn't involve a vinyl cutter like a Cricut or a Silhouette. We will be using those Jenga pieces, which I love so very much. If you can't find them in stores, they are available online right now on the Dollar Tree website. And the minimum you can buy is four, which is amazing because it's usually 24 for Dollar Tree. But anyway, I really hope that you enjoy this video and stick around by subscribing to this channel. Once you hit that subscribe button, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. And please go ahead and hit that notification bell so you know every time I post a video. Let's go ahead and get started. For this project, I'm going to be using this Halloween sign from Dollar Tree. And you can use this sanding block from Dollar Tree to remove the glitter, but I really like the sign, so I'm going to be using the back side, and I'm going to use my sanding block to remove the residue from the sticker that comes on it. So in the end, you are going to be able to use both sides of the sign. Once everything is removed, make sure that you get rid of all the dust and you cut off that string that comes with it. Now I want to cover these holes up and I'm going to use Dollar Tree's lightweight spackling to do that and their spatula. I just grabbed a small amount of product and I'm going to be filling up this bit as well. Now I will tell you this does take a really long time to dry. I've used spackling from other brands that are pretty quick drying but this one did take a while but that's okay because it's only a dollar so I did fill in those crevices and even though it's not straight up top it is totally okay I also went ahead and did the other side and the next day I grabbed my same sanding block and I'm going to straighten out those pieces even though you're not gonna see it but I still want to straighten it out so I can use the other side of the sign So next I'm going to be painting my sign and as you can see the other side is still intact. So I'm going to be using Folk Arts chalk paint in white and a little foam brush from Dollar Tree. I just want to show you here how well the spackling covered those little crevices there. I really was just testing to see if this was going to work. I was really happy that it did and as you can see everything is nice and covered. I gave the entire board two coats so that it's fully covered. And once it was completely covered, I decided to add some lettering. Now for this, you can do it on Word, but I used my phone and I used an app called Fonto. I clicked on the little photo icon at the bottom and went to my photo albums where I saved a blank white photo, which you can Google. And then I hit done up top and tapped on my image to type what I wanted. So I just typed the word laundry, and then I hit done, I hit font, and I picked lavanderia sturdy, you can pick whatever you want, and then I resized it to 3.00. And with my finger, I just dragged it all the way to the top left hand corner, and then saved it. Saving it on your phone might be different. This is on an iPhone. I then opened it on my photos and I edited it by rotating it so that it can fit the entire screen when I print. So once I sent it over to print, it covers the entire screen and I went ahead and wrote co using the exact same steps. Now I'm going to go ahead and bind these two pieces together using some tape, but I'm going to make sure that the tape doesn't cover any of the letters so that it doesn't get in my way. So now I'm just gonna cut this down so that I can maneuver this a little better. So I'm just gonna fold it and cut it.
Now that I have my stencil, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use sidewalk chalk in any color except for white, of course, since our chalk paint is white. And I am going to outline the letters instead of outlining the entire page. The reason I'm doing that is so that I don't have blue all over the place. I did that with my black chalk paint and it worked out just fine, but I thought with the blue it would get a little confusing. So now I'm gonna place it exactly where I want it and I'm gonna try not to move it around too much and I'm gonna tape it in place making sure that I'm not getting any of the letters. And then with a pen, pencil, anything pointy, you're going to outline your letters. You don't have to fill them in, you just wanna outline them really, really well so that you're able to see it when you lift this paper up. And I'm not gonna show you me doing all of this because it would bore you and make this video much longer, but you guys get the point. You're just going to make sure that you outline every single detail to make your life easier later on. So you can check how you're doing and how it's transferring. And as you can see, it's transferring beautifully. And when you're done, you can remove this completely and look how good that looks. Now you can use a Sharpie to outline it, but I'm using this painter's pen in the color black and I'm keeping my stencil around just as a guide. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna outline all of my letters and this is gonna make my life so much easier when it comes time to paint because I won't have to actually paint all of those really thin details and risk smudging, which I still did, but trust me, it makes your life so much easier. And feel free to move everything around to make it easier on you. So this is what it looks like. And now I'm gonna use this Apple Barrel paint in jet black. And I'm just going to use a very small brush and fill in those lines. You don't have to fill in the lines, you can keep it as is. It's totally up to you. So you can see here where I smudged my paint. I'm gonna wait till everything dries completely and then I'm gonna go back in with my chalk paint and a clean brush and clean everything up like you would concealer on your makeup. So now we're ready to move to the fun part, which is the frame, and I'm gonna be using the Jenga from Dollar Tree, which is on the website if you can't find it in stores. I'm gonna outline the bottom to see how many I need. And in total, I ended up using 13 for the top and bottom. As you can see, they stick out from the side, but once you add the three side pieces, everything is fully covered. So when you assemble everything together, the frame is actually gonna be on top of the wood plank, or you'll see in a second. I'm gonna move my Jenga out of the way and I'm gonna use Gorilla wood glue and a popsicle stick to attach. I'm gonna use a popsicle stick instead of the nozzle so that it doesn't seep out and I'm able to stain everything. You're going to attach them to each other but not to the frame yet because this is not how it's going to go. You just wanna use the frame as a guide. So this is what it's gonna look like while it's drying. And there's still gaps because this is not how it's gonna go. Trust me, just be a little patient. Make a row of 13, another row of 13 for the top, a row of three for the side, and another row of three for the other side, obviously. And you're gonna let everything dry. Once it is completely dry and you're able to pick it up without anything breaking apart, you can stain if you want to. Now I am going to be staining using my Minwax. You can of course use shoe polish or whatever you want. And I'm gonna be using my little foam brush. So now I'm just going to brush that on and make sure that I get all sides because I do have every intention on using the back of the frame. Once everything is completely stained, make sure that you're allowing this time to fully dry before moving on. So when it's time to assemble, I'm gonna be using my L-shaped ruler or a square. See you guys, I read comments. And I am going to use this to help me get a perfect shape. And I'm gonna bind this using my Gorilla Wood Glue. And be very generous when it comes to this part. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. 
and I'm gonna let it dry really, really well. Once it's completely dry, I am gonna place it on top of my plank to see how it looks. And then I'm gonna add the wood glue around my actual picture. Now, when you do this at home, you are gonna realize that you are gonna shift things around so that it fits nicely. But trust me, everything is completely covered in the end. So now I'm gonna flip it over and to hang on your wall, you can use command strips or you can actually add a hook to it, but I'm gonna use the foam mounting tape and I'm gonna add it to my corners and the middle. Now you can tell that this is still wet, so I'm gonna let it sit and dry. And once it's completely dry, you can place it on your wall and bam, you have a beautiful and affordable farmhouse laundry sign. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and thank you so, so much for watching. Till next time.